Hi everyone, Macman here. So this is going to be a video, the first video in a new series that I'm about to do on loading nine mil cast bullets. Hi everyone, welcome back. So this is going to be part four of uh, reloading nine mil with my cast bullets and hopefully you've been following along in the series um, if you haven't you want to go back and check them out because we do the whole process from start to finish over the last three videos and into the fourth one so don't forget guys if you like like my videos please like share and subscribe hit that bell notification and you'll get updated on any new videos that I'm posting so in this one we're gonna go through and seat the bullets and do some crimping and we're going to be checking them as well and in previous videos you saw we had a problem with the Beretta we've sorted that out we've come to a conclusion we had to shorten them right down thanks Walter for your help I really appreciate it and um, let's go through and do this so in the previous video you've seen us um, flaring powder charging and now we're going to go in and we're going to seat these um, these are the RCBS 149 grain, uh, well 147 grain bullets but they are dropping at 150 these are, these are just a little bit heavier than the, the 147 they should be. So all you want to do is you want to sit them in there as square as you get them, slowly bring them up into the seating die and then we're going to crimp them. As you can see, we aren't scuffing, no paint, no lead, they're going in perfect now, and we're sitting at a measurement of 1.081, which we set them up earlier at, and we have a case gauge here, they drop straight in the case gauge and they're falling straight out. So everything's good, so we'll go, we'll check the odd one as we're going through, but we can set these up. Nice and square. So just a nice steady pressure all the way through to seat the bullet. And again, same nice steady pressure, brings it down. And it does a beautiful crimp as well. We're using the Lee factory crimp die and we're using the red in and then the red in die set but just with the Lee factory crimp die. So as you knew in earlier videos guys we are going to be taking these to the range. Um, I've made 15 of each of the powder settings so we've done 15 at 3.2 and then we jumped up 0.2 gray 0.2 of a grain to 3.04 3.4 sorry and then the last one we jumped to 3.7 which we were still under the max for what the, the Lee cast book is giving us. So I have 15 rounds of each. So I said originally we probably shoot seven through each gun, but we probably shoot five through each gun and I'll take three pistols. I'll probably take the Beretta that I've been having the issues with, with it, um, with it jamming. So obviously I want to take that one to make sure these are functioning properly in that. Um, I'm probably going to take my Canuck Rival All Steel. And 
side which will be the, the third one and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to shoot them for groups with the three different weights of powder charge and we'll chrono them as well just to see what speeds I'm getting out of them and see how consistent they are it's always worth checking them guys you've got a nice um, case gauge checker it takes literally seconds to make sure that they're they're feeding in the case right and I had to do it in a like I said in the last video we had to do it in a, a bit of a roundabout way rather than just going through and powder charge, flaring, powder charging, seating and crimping in one video um, I want to stay within the guidelines for YouTube I don't want to get any strikes I don't want to lose my channel because it's growing nicely now so it's just a matter of staying in within the guidelines hopefully what we're doing is they're happy within the guidelines of how we're doing it now so spreading it over a couple of videos is the safest way to do this. It makes the process on video a little bit longer because we're jumping around a little bit, but hopefully doing it right. So again, you can just see they're dropping in, they're falling out. Let's do a quick measure on this one. And we're at 1.082. So a thou longer on that one than the rest. But it might be down to the, the front of the nose, the powder coating. So it's just giving us just a, a little bit a little bit more. So we've done all the um, 3.2s, so we're going to go on to the 3.4s and again you can see I'm using this Lee Classic turret press. I will be honest with you guys, it's, it's an okay press. Um, and as you can see now, for doing, I've done nothing apart from just turning this by hand just to miss the two stations, and it's it's gone out to timing again, which I find quite a bit with this turret press. You can see it's turning, but it's not going all the way round. So let's see if I can just. Just this back up so the timing is right again. So it's again, it's not quite, doesn't quite turn all the way. So you just try and grip the tube, turn it just a touch, and hopefully then. We've got the timing back right. There is a lot of plastic that the whole thing turns on here, which I'm not a big fan of. I saw quite a few reviews on this press, and they weren't too bad. They last back in time now, but for the, it's a it's a it's a little cheap press. Um, it does a good job, don't get me wrong, it does a good job, but the timing, going in and out on it, bugs me a little bit. But it's uh, it's okay. And again, you can see they're perfect in there, they're dropping out. That 
one is 1.82 1 sorry 1.082 um, and if you look there on the powder coating let me just see if I can get that to focus in for you guys there's a little piece there that's not covered but the powder coating, the outer coating, the clear coat has covered it through. So even though there's a spot there we can see through, it is covered. So I'm not sorry about that again guys, battery died, I've been doing a lot of filming today. So let me just take that back and show you again. So if you can just look on the front of that bullet, there is a little spot there that does look, doesn't look like it's covered in the paint. But it has, it is, it's totally covered with a powder coat in. So that's not going to be an issue for me. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, it's covered over the lead, except it's just a patch of the colour that's not missing. But you can run your finger over it and it's it's covered with a, with like the clear, the clear coat to the powder coat. Like I said, it's a bit. We've done this in a, a roundabout way, just to to stay in within the the YouTube guidelines. So I'm gonna go through. I'll finish these off, guys, and I'll bring you back at the end when we've finished. Okay, everyone, we're coming to the end now. I've got the last few to do, so. Um, This will be the, the last batch of 15 um, with these RCBS bullets. And what I'll do then is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do exactly the same again using the, the M&P bullets, the slick sided ones. Um, I will run them at the same length. Um, I'll use the same powder charges in them, what I've done with these. Again, I'll make 15 of each, 3.2, 3.4, and then 3.7, and then that will give me um, another batch to try, so we can try the these RCBS and the M&P slick sided, um, which are just slightly lighter. They're coming in. These are around. Um, 149 150s again you can see they're just dropping in and falling out and 1.081 so yeah so the I'll be doing exactly the same now 15 of each round using these slick sided M&P bullets these are coming out at 149 and what I like to do as well, just to finish off guys, so I put RCBS 147FN cast bullet so I know exactly what mould I've used. There's your, your, your unique powder and I put my overall length, this is 1.082 and I put a date on as well. And inside, at the top, 15, 3.2 grains at the top. 3.4 grains M for in the middle and 3.7 grains for the bottom row. So I'll put the next lot in the bottom and I already know the unique um, unique powder. So all this data is going to go into my data book that I keep all records for um, every bullet I make. So once I've been back to the range and we've got the chronograph settings and the group settings, that'll be added in and then I'll decide which powder charge I'm going to go for with these bullets which suit the guns best and the same I'll do it with a slick sided as well on the, on the next batch I'm going to make another 45 I'm not going to run through that on the video guys so you, you, you can see what I've done here so there was my there was my last batch that we've just done so these were the 3.7 grains um, 1.081 length and these are ready to go so I'll add that to the box and go in and start all over again with the new bullets so that's the end of this one guys 
So the next one um, is probably going to be at the range. Um, it's probably going to be next weekend. I'll get out to the range. We'll do the whole um, group in, chronograph it, see how everything functions and shoots. And that'll be the uh, video number five, I believe. And then the last video, we'll come back to the loading room and we'll go over all the results and we'll see how everything fares out. So I hope you're enjoying this series so far, guys. If you are, please like, share and subscribe. Don't forget that bell notification. That'll keep you updated with everything. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget I've got live streams Monday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Arizona time. And we'll catch you on the next.